You're listening to the American Girl Podcast Network. Hi, I'm Maggie Lawson, the narrator of 10 Minute Mysteries. This season's story is based on one of our favorite American Girl mystery books, The Light in the Cellar, a Molly mystery by Sarah Bucky. Episode 7, Suspicious. Molly biked home fast, eager to tell Emily what she had seen at Greystone Manor. She found Emily in the backyard with Yank and Bennett. As Molly settled herself on the grass beside them, the puppies tried to climb all over her and lick her face. Okay, okay, boys. Here, go fetch. Molly picked up a stick and threw it across the yard. As the puppies raced off, Molly told Emily, the cellar was full of bags that looked like sacks of flour or sugar stacked up as high as the cellar window. Whoever is stealing the sugar from the hospital and the Red Cross might be hiding them in Mrs. Courier's cellar. Molly expected Emily to be impressed by her detective work, but Emily shrugged. You know, my parents keep all sorts of things in our cellar. At least they used to before. Emily's voice broke, and Molly knew she was remembering the bombings in London. Quickly, Molly asked, How did your visit with your aunt go? Not well at all. I never even got to see her. As I was parking my bike, I saw Mr. Pritchard about to drive away in his truck, but then he asked what I was doing there. I told him I had come to visit my aunt. He said I could come only during visiting hours unless I was working as a volunteer, and Friday visiting hours don't begin until 7 o'clock tonight. He's so mean, said Molly. Just then, the back door opened and Molly's mother stepped out. A tempting smell of cinnamon and vanilla drifted from the kitchen. Mm. Mrs. McIntyre offered the girls a small plate of broken cookie pieces and said, I know Mr. Pritchard. He runs a tight ship. He wants everything to be perfect for his patients. Say, a friend across town called to say that she's baked cookies for the canteen. I was going to drive over tonight and pick them up. Would you like me to take you to the hospital, Emily, so that you can visit your aunt? Yes, please, said Emily. Oh, can I come too? And can I bring a National Geographic? Molly asked. She was curious about Emily's Auntie Prim, and maybe she could finally make Philip happy by bringing him the magazine he wanted. After dinner, Mrs. McIntyre dropped Molly and Emily off at the hospital entrance, telling them, I'll be back in an hour. Oaknell looked forbidding in the dark as the two girls walked quickly up to the third floor, hoping they wouldn't run into Mr. Pritchard. At room 303, Emily stopped and knocked on the door. Do come in. Why, Emily, what a lovely surprise. A middle-aged woman with carrot-colored hair and freckles was sitting up in the bed. She smiled brightly as the girls entered, saying, And this must be Molly. I'm very glad to meet you. Your family is so kind to take Emily in. As soon as I'm recovered and Emily comes to live with me, you must visit us. We'll have great fun. Do you know Marta? She works here at the hospital. Oh, yes, I know Marta. Her little girl, Ruth, attends the school where I teach. Before I got sick, I often saw Marta walking Ruth to kindergarten. And we've chatted a few times here at Oak Knoll, too. Marta is a refugee from Poland. Molly and Emily nodded. They had heard of the terrible things happening in Europe during the war. Molly asked, Did Marta escape from the Nazis? Yes. Her husband was Jewish. He and Marta had been working against the Nazis in Poland, so they were in terrible danger. Marta's husband helped her escape with their daughter. He was supposed to follow her, but he never made it. Auntie Prim stared sadly down at her bed covers. Molly took a deep breath and asked, Do you think Marta might be in trouble with the police? Why would you think such a thing? Asked Auntie Prim. Molly described how Mr. Lawrence had threatened to report Marta to the police. Auntie Prim frowned and said, He's probably just afraid because of the war right now, and he's taking out his fear on poor Marta. But now that you mention it, there is at least one thing Marta's hiding. She moved to Jefferson into a house with her cousin. But when her cousin got married, Marta and Ruth had to move into an apartment in a different town. Marta wants to keep Ruth in the Jefferson Public School, so she hasn't actually told the school that she's moved. Molly had questions she wanted to ask, 
But a nurse came into the room and announced, Time's up, girls. Our patient needs her rest. Molly and Emily said goodbye and headed down the stairs. At the second floor landing, Emily stopped and asked, Do you think Marta stole the sugar? It doesn't seem like someone brave enough to escape the war and save her daughter would be a thief. Molly thought for a moment and then said, I hope you're right, but she is brave and she needs money. Just think how much money she could get by selling all those bags of sugar. On the second floor, Molly led the way to room 214. The door was ajar, so Molly poked her head in and waved. Philip called, Hello, Molly. Do you have a new magazine for me? Yes, here you go. This is last month's issue. It's a good one. Molly held up the bright yellow National Geographic, and Philip's face lit up. Thank you. My mother had to leave, but I'll ask the night nurse to read it to me, he said happily, as Molly set the magazine on his bed. You're welcome, said Molly. And there's something I want to ask you. You said you have seen someone around here breaking the rules. Is it Marta? Philip looked puzzled. Marta? Wait, you mean the aide? Nah, not her. It's Nurse Schroeder. You really want to know? Philip asked mysteriously. Molly nodded. Philip lowered his voice so that Molly and Emily had to lean close to hear him whisper. She goes out and smokes cigarettes at night in the parking lot. I can see her from here. Philip craned his head slightly on the pillow showing the girls how he could look out the window. He continued, One time, Mr. Pritchard drove up in the middle of the night and almost caught her, but she ran inside as soon as she saw his truck. Oh, said Molly, a bit disappointed. She didn't see how Nurse Schroeder's smoking could have anything to do with the missing sugar. Looking out the window at the parking lot below, Molly asked Philip, Do you often see people out there late at night? Yes, you'd be surprised, said Philip. People are coming and going all the time here. The evening nurses leave at 11, and that aide, Marta, sometimes arrives late too. Emily asked Philip, How can you tell it's Marta at night? The car park is awfully dark. Because Marta always parks her bicycle in the same place, so I know it's her. Suddenly, Philip's eyes narrowed and his voice grew suspicious. Say, why are you asking me questions about Marta? Do you think she's a spy or something? No, we were just testing to see how good a spy you were. You passed. Molly said quickly, and Philip looked proud. Molly and Emily said goodnight to Philip and headed downstairs to wait for Mrs. McIntyre. Isn't it strange that Marta works so late at night? But before Emily could reply, Mr. Pritchard burst through the hallway door. The girls shrank back as he hurried past them and down the stairs that led to the kitchen. Suddenly, Molly thought of something. Philip said that Mr. Pritchard came here in the middle of the night in a truck. And didn't you say he was driving a truck when you came here earlier today? Was it like the one we saw at Greystone Manor? Yes, it was closed in the back like that one. And it was black or maybe dark blue. Molly's eyes widened. Then Emily shook her head. But I also saw the man from Lawrence Laundry and the man from Bartle's Grocery in the parking lot. And they had black delivery trucks too. But a grocer wouldn't have to steal food. And Mr. Lawrence is the one who said I should be on the lookout for anything suspicious. And I think it's suspicious that Mr. Pritchard is going down to the hospital's kitchen so late at night. I wonder what he's doing. Motioning to Emily to follow, Molly tiptoed down the hall and opened the door to the kitchen stairs. Don't go down there, Emily warned. But Molly had already started down the stairs. Mr. Pritchard has been acting a bit suspicious, don't you think? Listen to next week's episode to find out what else Molly discovers after heading downstairs at Oak Knoll Hospital. Thank you so much for listening to 10 Minute Mysteries. And parents, don't forget to write us a review wherever you are listening. It really helps us out. Parents can watch 10 Minute Mysteries with their family on YouTube or your child can watch on YouTube Kids. 